Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And we just got back from seeing Life, otherwise known as Alien Meets Gravity if you've seen the trailers. And I was actually pretty excited about this movie because the trailer pretty much sold me that I was going to see a pretty interesting monster movie. But instead of like the normal future setting, it's set in like what our modern space stations look like today. Yeah, yeah. it's like the near future of like maybe 10 years from now. Exactly, you know? exactly. So it's uh, so it, it it's like watching it an Apollo 13 style movie but there's an alien there's an alien board. in it yeah it's an alien and it's killing people it's killing people yeah um and it's got a really fantastic cast you got Idris Elba you have Jake Gyllenhaal and you have a whole bunch of other people whose names I'm now forgetting oh, it's Ryan Reynolds that's right Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds is, is also in it he's um, also in it freaking uh um uh, What's the Japanese guy's name? He looked really familiar. Fuck. Uh, it was the guy from it, it, it was the guy from uh, Rogue One, wasn't it? Oh shit! You're probably right. Yeah. That's probably why he looks so familiar. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the guy's yeah, name, I, and I, I feel either. so yeah, I, feel I feel like, like such an, an asshole. Ass. Well, it's really funny because we both recognize him. We're like, I looked. At I actually don't know an actor's name. I looked know? at him and I'm like, that guy looks really familiar, but I can't remember what I saw him in and what his name was, and I felt so bad. But yeah. everyone's great. Oh, everyone's God. great in this yeah. movie. Um, everyone does the thing that the original Alien did, where you only know a little bit about each character, but you know enough to care about all of them. Yeah. Um, and, and their interactions with one another are very natural, especially in the beginning of the movie. There's a lot of, like, layering over people talking one, uh, talking over one another that worked really well because it made it feel like, oh, this is taking place in reality. Yeah, there was... Uh, the, the, the interaction between all the characters was very good because mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of... There wasn't a hated guy. No. You usually have one guy in this kind of scenario that everyone hates, but they didn't actually do that because they're like, well, they're they're in space. They've been working very closely together for like a mm -hmm. month, and they've become very, very close. The closest thing to an unlikable character you have is the security chief who is not unlikable. And she's not. She, yeah, you know? yeah. But she, she's she has to make these really awful decisions that she doesn't want to make. Well, but she's she has cold to. and stern, but you understand why, but she's not inhuman yo yeah she doesn't take it to the level that she becomes like the villain from avatar or something you yeah know? exactly you, you know? know and um there's no one in this movie that's like the asshole from aliens who's just like there for the corporation or anything there's nothing yeah, like that no this is just a bunch of scientists in space who were all there for their particular fields you have obviously the more space jockey kind of guy who's there to, yeah. special, to do the manual labor stuff. Yeah. You have uh, the uh, the British scientist who is there to inspect whatever they find on Mars. Um, you have the, the CDC woman who is the security yeah. chief who's there to basically make sure that they follow protocol, that everything is safe, and that whatever they find on Mars does not make it back to Earth unless it's properly vetted. Yeah, yeah, unless they're like, all right, it poses no threat whatsoever. Um, and you have the comms person who's basically doing all the tech stuff, who's a Japanese guy. Yeah. Um, and uh, you have the doctor, who's played by Jake Gyllenhaal. And you have, uh, I forget what the position of the other girl was, but she had... An she was the other doctor. She was the other doctor? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. She was the one who was checking him when... Yeah, they had, they had two doctors on staff. That, just that's right. in case something went wrong with one of them. And uh, you you really quickly get to get to know the interaction with all of them at the beginning of the movie, and they do it in this really beautiful like single take shot that was obviously composed of like a bunch of different shots. Yeah, but they made it look like it's all one fluid shot that gives you the whole layout of the sh of the space station, as well as gives you a little bit on who each character are as people and what their position is on the ship. Yeah, and I thought that was like that was a magnificent sequence because yeah, it's, it's like they did five really minutes. Well. Of just going through this whole ship and just all these characters getting into their positions, doing their stuff while they're all trying to catch this Mars probe. Um, and none of that, that is not a spoiler in the slightest because that's literally in the trailer. That's... Yeah, yeah, it's in the trailer. It's in the, it's the first like 10 minutes of the movie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Um, but, uh, yeah, like, I, I like this movie. Like, there were a couple times where I felt like the editing was a little weird because there's a lot of, like, overlayering of people talking and, like, footage happening that felt a little montage -y. Yeah. But outside of that, like, I didn't really have too many complaints. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, the way I felt about this movie is that it's, it was a very solid film. Mm -hmm. Probably not gonna, not gonna change your life. It's not gonna rock your world. Yeah. It's not even gonna be like Gravity or Alien, which oh, are like no. masterpieces of their genres. It's not one of those, but it's definitely taking from both. Yeah, well, how, how to put it, like, if you're gonna combine Alien and Gravity, this is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. 
You know, one of the biggest, I think, um, one of the things that uh, I feel actually was a little underwhelming. It's that the monster is threatening and is dangerous. But it doesn't feel scary in and of itself. No, it's not. Uh, unfortunately, it, like the, I, I like the design of it. I like a lot of the things it does, and I like how it's like smarter than most of the crew members at times. Yeah, but it's not that scary. No. It's not like when you're watching Alien for the first time and you don't even fucking want to go under doorways because you're afraid that it's gonna yeah, like, it's just down. gonna drop down yeah. and just be like, Ugh. you know, it's not yeah. like that. And I I think like part of that is because the monster is almost completely composed of CG in this movie, or at least it looks like it. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. And another part of it is that because it's on a modern space station, there are no shadows. A modern yeah. space station <sighs> space station is just so perfectly lit. And so there is there is no way you could actually compose shots like Ridley Scott's Alien that really make you scared of a creature. Yeah, well, the, there's there's another thing, uh, another aspect to it that I had noticed, mm -hmm. which is while the thing's obviously very dangerous, there's something that a good monster always has that mm -hmm. is always scary, mm -hmm. which is teeth. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have teeth. This that's monster point, doesn't have yeah. teeth. It barely has a face. Yes. And that's obviously part of its design. It's supposed to look super inhuman. Mm -hmm. And it does. It's supposed to look like, like like in the trailer where they talk about, like, it's a single-celled or organism and it's expanding. It's all brain. It's all muscle. Yeah, all brain and muscle. It's supposed to look like a, like, giant amoeba, essentially. Yeah, yeah, like an amoeba crossed with an octopus. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Um, and... I, I, what it reminded me of is a movie that you kept mentioning going into the movie is that the alien reminded me of like Leviathan a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole <laughs> setup reminded me a bit of Leviathan. You know, which if you haven't seen, it's kind of, it's a bunch of people. They find an alien, they bring it on board, but the, the twist is they're not in space, they're in the deep sea. Yeah, it's alien crossed with the thing set underwater. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically it. That's what Leviathan it's one is. Of the, it's the best of the thing slash alien ripoffs. And much know? like and much like this movie, it's not as good as the movies it's taking from, but it's an okay movie, it's all right. It's yeah, all yeah, right. yeah. I would, If people are like, hey, is Leviathan any good? to be like, it's worth the hour and a half, you'll watch it, you know? Absolutely. I would say I was way more invested in the characters in this movie than I was in Leviathan. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think that's oh, I yeah. think it's mainly due to like the cast in this movie is just on the ball. Well, I, well but you got like Jake Gyllenhaal, Ryan Reynolds, and Idris Elba oh, to start with. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. You know, like they they really really What's well, hard to hate Ryan? It it's, is. It's hard to it hate is. Ryan, like, and it's it's hard to not like feel for Idris Elba at any moment. Yeah. And Jake Gyllenhaal, when Jake Gyllenhaal looks like all hope is lost, you feel it. Like, yeah. You know. Um. So yeah, I I like this movie. I definitely recommend it if you want to go see a movie this weekend that is not Power Rangers and you want to see something R rated and horror. Definitely see this. If you're a science fiction horror fan, if you like movies like Splice, if you like movies like Alien, this is definitely a nice oh, yeah, addition to that canon. Um. And uh, I guess we will now move on to the spoilers. Alrighty then, so where do we begin with the spoilers? Um, I was not expecting Ryan Reynolds to be the first one killed. No, no, I wasn't either. I, I thought he would at least make it to the second reel. It was a nice trick, though, because yeah. having Deadpool die first, I was like, oh shit, no one's gonna yeah, make yeah, it. Yeah, like, you don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> but I, and the funny thing is, based on the trailer, I thought it was gonna be Idris Elba who dies first. Yeah. But no. it isn't, it isn't. It's it's Ryan Reynolds. Idris Elba dies way later. Um. <laughs> And that's not, yeah. And, 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 and that, that should be another thing. If you're expecting many survivors in this movie, you haven't seen many science fiction horror movies. Is was there many survivors in the thing? Was there many survivors in Alien? I don't think so. No, it's was only <laughs> yeah. There's either an Alien. There's the only one survivor, and in the thing, there are either two or, or none. Or not. Yeah. 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 Depending on how how you think that went down. Depending on how you interpret that ending. And, oh man, like ah, uh, the thing. Yeah. That's a masterpiece. Yeah, that that, that really this is. This movie, like I said, does not reach those heights. But if you like monster movies, then this is definitely one you could check out. Yeah, so. when when you see the uh, trailer, you think it's going to be a little bit more existential than it actually is. No, it's not really existential. It's just a straight up monster movie. Yeah, it's it's it, it felt it reminded me a bit of uh, Sunshine without without all the bullcrap. With the, yeah, Sunshine tries to be existential, and like those parts actually work the best. But then when it becomes a straight up monster movie in space, it kind of falls apart. Yeah, yeah. And whereas, I like Sunshine, but like that third act feels like it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Whereas this one, uh, this this monster movie in space, it it held together pretty well. Oh, absolutely, you absolutely. Know? It, it, it definitely like 
it, it there was never any moment where I was sitting there going like, oh, this is the moment where the movie loses me. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, you know? no, no, nothing like that. You like, know? even when the monster first showed up, I was like, okay, are, is, okay, I like the design. I like this. Okay, cool. It's going to be all CG. All right, I can live with that. And as it went on, I'm like, oh, the CG's not bothering me, but I definitely am not feeling the menace, like you said. Yeah, yeah, you don't feel, you're not afraid of the creature. I am more concerned for the well-being of, well-beings of the main characters than I are than I am afraid of the monster. Yeah. I guess is the best way to put it. That, that is a really good way to put it. Like, like overall, if I was to give this a, a 1 out of 10 rating, I would say it was a 7 out of 10. So 7, yeah. I was above gonna... average, but not doesn't quite reach that, like... Yeah, it would be like a 7 or an 8 for me, somewhere within that realm yeah um because it's definitely not a 10 and it's definitely not a nine <laughs> yeah so probably seven or eight for me depending upon how i feel um but like let's see uh so <laughs> what, what, what what could we talk about in the spoilers it's section? hard it's hard to talk it's hard to talk about uh the movie because it, it i think we're really really familiar with these types of films yeah and so it does kind of break down you roughly the way you would think it would you have the basic formula you have space station oh we're getting this probe from mars which is the equivalent of oh we're getting a distress signal on this planet yeah. or oh uh this this dog just walked ran onto our property yeah. from the Norwegian camp you have that moment and then it's like okay oh shit in the mars samples there's this amoeba thing inside of it it's alive or is it? Let's try to poke it and see if it yeah, lives. Yeah, yeah, poke it with a stick, see what happens. You know, and then it slowly starts growing, and you have that moment in the trailer where they're all like, oh, it's all muscle and all brain. Oh, shit, this thing must be really smart. Yeah. Um, and it is. It, it, yeah, it's uh, really smart. It fucking breaks Idris Elba's hand inside the thing, and then uses the thing he used to poke it to break through the, 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 glove, the, the glove. The glove, yeah. The glove in the containment unit. Yeah, that's how um, it gets out. You know, and then, like, the crew is like, oh, shit, we're not supposed to go in there. He's in quarantine. We can't do it. And Ryan Reynolds is being the, being the jock guy. Is like, fuck it, I'm going in. And just fucking goes in and takes a flamethrower to the fucking thing. Yeah, this is where you find <laughs> out that it cannot be burned. Which I think is, I, I would have to, I would I, I would have to, like, like turn to someone like Neil deGrasse Tyson to break down the movie for me. But I'm pretty sure the flamethrower was the one part of the movie that didn't make sense scientifically. For the simple reason that I don't think flamethrowers would dissipate that quickly. Depends on how you <laughs> use a flamethrower. I don't know. Because it just kind of goes straight in the line and then stops. And I'm like, but in space, doesn't the flames like... <laughs> oh, that's a good point. I think you would... Yeah. It was the one moment of science in the movie where I'm like, I don't know about that. Yeah, but how would you simulate it without making it look Well, exactly. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. It, it was okay. Um... Uh, the oxygen sticks I'm actually fascinated by. I'm wondering if those things are real. Because there's a point where they're using these sticks that, like, like burn oxygen off of them. And I was like, that's interesting. I wonder if those are real. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're using it to lure the monster because the monster needs oxygen as much as they do. And so they start draining the ship of oxygen. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they try to, uh, yeah, they try to suffocate it. And they're losing sections of the ship as they continue to do this. Yes, yes. Because, well, the, the monster's on a fucking rampage. Um, so, yeah, like, he saves Idris Elba, but the monster completely just, just eviscerates uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds from the inside. Oh, yeah. And so, like, he's, like, coughing up all the blood. And you have this really beautiful shot of all the blood floating in the air. It's CG blood, but... What did I expect them to do for floating for, blood? Yeah, for blood and zero gravity. Like, yeah. th that was going to be CG no matter what. <laughs> it's like... It's not like they could film this in space. The most they can do when they film movies like this is, is I know that for like Apollo 13, they shot a lot of things in one of those planes that does the dive. Yeah. I don't know how they filmed this movie if it was entirely CG, but like, how do you do that with fucking like blood and shit like that? Yeah. Like, you'd have to do CG yeah. to do this. You know, this is a movie that can only be made with the technology of today right now. Um, but yeah, you have this beautiful shot where all the blood from his insides are everywhere and the monster's crawling out of him and it's gotten like 10 times bigger from eating. Yeah. Because it, it's clear it eats things. It, it eats a rat at one point. Yep. Um, a rat that they have in this containment unit, which I'm not entirely sure what they were going to test on it, but it was there. Yeah. And it's set up really early on, so you don't question it. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, at that point, the monster escapes because they try to drain all the oxygen out of the room and it escapes through the vent that the oxygen is getting out of. Yep. Um, and then at that point, it's outside the ship and it starts doing shit like destroying their comm links and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, the assumption is it's doing it to get the coolant, but you also know it's supposed to be hella smart. So you start to wonder if it knows what it's doing. Yeah. Which is what Idris Elba keeps saying over the course of the movie, even though he's got this fucked up hand. 
<laughs> and Idris Elba's character is interesting because he's definitely the guy who's the scientist who kind of feels for the creature like it's his own son. Yeah. Like, it's a joke in the trailer, but it's real in the movie. Um, so there's a point where Idris Elba literally lets the monster, like, eat his leg without telling anyone. Yeah. And he fucking, like, goes into hyper, uh, like, what is it? Like, uh, that shock. Shock. One. Yeah, yeah, basically. A and they arrest, and they try to defib... Yeah. Fib, defib him, uh, defibrillate him, uh, like in the thing, um, and but they but they see something moving on his leg and they move his leg. His leg's just fucking devoured by the thing, and he doesn't care because he doesn't he doesn't have working legs. He's in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, he's paralyzed from the the waist down, which is a really cool aspect of that character. It was a very simple thing that made you care for him like immediately. Yeah, guy in space who doesn't want to go back down because back down he has to be in a wheelchair. Up here he can fly. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he can just move around. You know, he doesn't have to worry about it. You know, and and the monster then it then then it, then it systematically starts attacking people. There's a point where one of the girls because Ryan Reynolds is dead, he's the guy who usually does a spacewalk. So one yeah. of the girls volunteers to do it, and the alien attacks her when she tries to fix the comm and uh, destroys her uh, coolant tank. Yeah, yeah, she so her her. Her uh, her suit fills up. with the liquid. Yeah, exactly. That cools the tank, and she drowns. Yeah, and then she like they're trying to like get her through the airlock, but she shuts the airlock and just just dies because she doesn't want to let the alien in. Yeah, um, which I believe its name is Kelvin. Which they have this Kelvin, whole yeah they have this whole sequence where there's a whole bunch of kids on Earth asking the si the. The astronauts questions about the alien they found and uh like one of these kids won this contest where they got to decide the name of the alien and they named it after their school like kelvin elementary. kelvin coolidge elementary yeah something know. like that so it became kelvin um which is not the most menacing name no, for a it's, monster it's not the most menacing name you know like like That's, the the like it, alien, alien is a more menacing name Al xenomorph. xenomorph xenomorph yeah xenomorph, you know um the thing it <laughs> like, yeah you know, the blah. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. Yeah, something like that. You whatever. Know. It has a name. It has a name. Um, uh, there's this great sequence where the Japanese guy's stuck in one of the sleeping tanks and the alien's like trying to like squeeze yeah, it. Yeah, it's trying to get him in. So it's trying to crush it. And the yeah. guy's just like looking at this picture of his daughter who was just born at the beginning of the movie. You see her being born and him showing all the crew. It's like, hey, May's born. May's yeah. born. Yeah. And I, and I felt bad because the first thing I could think of when he said May is born, I'm like, oh, great. Bork wall's coming up. <laughs> exactly. You know, I was go. like having Overwatch flashbacks. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, May's not Japanese. <laughs> Uh, that's another thing. It's it, because it's supposed to be an international space station. It's a very multicultural cast. You yeah, got going on here. You got like the Russian girl. You got the French girl. You got you yeah, got the, the Japanese two American guy, guys. The American and... guys, absolutely. Even though like CDC is technically an American organization, it is. Yeah. So why was the British girl <laughs> like? I. <laughs> you got a point there. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why she was British. Well, because she didn't have like an American flag on a thing, so she had the British thing. So she was definitely from Britain, but she was CDC. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I, I whatever, don't know. whatever. Maybe maybe we got him confused. Maybe the, uh, the I might have mixed the girls up. It's yeah, possible. maybe the one who does the sp no, no, she was Russian. You're right. She, she was. was Russian. She couldn't be CDC. Okay, I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. I, I no found one on. hole in the yeah. movie that I'm sure someone in the comment section will tell me why I'm an idiot for fucking assuming that was a problem. I, this is a movie where I literally want to see like Neil deGrasse Tyson's breakdown of it. Yeah, like, yeah, really that'd badly. Probably be pretty good, you know. Um, so yeah, like it reaches this point. It all culminates into this point where there's two people left. You have the CDC girl and you have Jake Gyllenhaal, and everyone else has just been either eaten by the monster or sacrifice themselves to try to stop the monster, which is what happens to the Japanese guy. Yeah. Um, and at this point, the monster, the monster, the, the, the combination of the Japanese guy and the monster accidentally causes this rescue ship that it turns out is not a rescue ship. It's actually yeah. supposed to propel them out into space as the last containment procedure. Yeah. But the Japanese guy doesn't know that. So he like, dives down to like the rescue ship to try to open it up and get inside but he ends up letting the monster inside which ends up eating up all the crew inside yeah. of it and the the thing ends up getting like bumped and like and like it like smashes into the rest of the ship and so the ship's now the, the, the international space station's now in free fall towards earth and so Jake Gyllenhaal and the CDC girl the CDC girl the only two remaining characters are like all right, we're going to go to the escape pods. I'm going to lure it into the escape pod, and I am going to jettison my escape pod with it up into space, and you are going to get down to Earth. 
And that's what this whole movie culminates yeah, into yeah. in this one moment. And you have this great like space walking sequence where the where the where the skate pods are like bumping into each other and shit like that. And I am not even though it's a spoiler section, I'm not going to tell you what happens after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that is a surprise all for all of you to find out. But, uh, yeah, I like this movie. Yeah, um, it was pretty good. It's a solid monster movie. Um, I would recommend seeing it in theaters because the visuals are very fucking beautiful. So seeing it on the big screen would be just right. Yeah. But at the same time, if you wanted to wait to like see this on Netflix or when it hits Amazon or something like that, that's fine too because it's not like it's not like a world a life-changing movie. No, no, it isn't. You know, like you, you wanted to see Gravity on a yes, big screen. Yes, you absolutely needed system. to. But um this one not so much. Although one detail I did really appreciate uh -huh. is the the security girl, the CDC girl uh, who would yeah. set up all the security protocols and all that stuff. I appreciated the fact that they actually did use what 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 is essentially CDC containment protocol. Yes. Which is basically keep it in that thing. If that fails, keep it in this thing and anyone inside is not allowed out. Yes. And if that fails, then we've got a bigger problem. No one gets out and stage 4 is kill everybody. And ironically, kill everything. <laughs> ironically, it's the humanity of all the characters that causes stage 2 to fail. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and then, and then, and then, of course, one of the other problems is that the monster is, it's not a disease, it's an intelligent creature. Yes. So it actually, <sighs> it actually thinks its way around things and kind of figures out some of their plans as they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. So you got basically, it's called life because you have these two life forms that are fighting for survival. Absolutely. I can't think of what more to say unless you have any last moments. No, I think that's all it. Right. I think that's all there is to it. In that case, my fellow Gorehounds, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you can be notified upon my videos immediately upon their upload. And as I always say, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out! And I'll catch y'all later.